And now, let's find out about how one broken fuse made a lot of Soviet engineers lose their minds. The island of Taiwan has brought naught but pain to the communist government of China ever since the end of the Chinese Civil War and the creation of the PRC. That was exactly where the rest of Chiang Kai-shek's army evacuated. Using the help of the Americans, they turned the island into an unsinkable aircraft carrier. From there, American bombers could attack Chinese most crowded regions barely after gaining some altitude. No wonder Mao Zedong was doing everything he could to exterminate the rest of the Kuomintang party. The first attempt was right after the war ended in Korea. To no avail, Chiang Kai-shek soldiers were equipped with the newest American weapons and successfully resisted the attacks. By 1958, China grew some muscles and tried again. This time, the outdated Thunder Jets and Sabres faced the newest MiG-17s with their powerful engines, top-notch alarm systems and menacing guns. At first, the Taiwanese forces were losing people as they should have. But then, the Air Force of the Chinese People's Liberation Army lost a few fighters in one single day. That could only mean one thing. Chiang Kai-shek's pilots used some new kind of weapon. They soon figured out what it was. It was the AIM-9B Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile. It wasn't perfect, and Taiwanese pilots had very little idea of how to use it properly. And it still was terrifyingly effective. China had to quickly restore at least a feeble idea of parity in the air. So, its soldiers were searching through literally square kilometers of ground, looking for bits and pieces of these rockets. And then they received something that could only be referred to as a present from heavens. One of the sidewinders locked onto the Chinese MiG-17 and thrust into its rear. Neither the impact fuse nor the time fuse did its thing. The plane's control elements weren't damaged. Nothing was set on fire. The turbine also kept working as it should. The aircraft with the missile sticking out of it successfully returned to base. Unfortunately, at the time, Chinese specialists weren't capable of reverse engineering such tech. They had to ask for help from the USSR, even though the relationship between the two countries was becoming less and less pleasant. But with a trophy like this, there could be no delays. The Sidewinder was given to the Soviet specialists who were, well, shocked. The missile figuratively blew their minds. For example, the Sidewinder didn't have any autopilot and no complicated system of additional control engines for roll stabilization. Instead, the Americans invented a completely new type of stabilizer, Rollerons. They were designed to be spun by incoming air streams, thus creating gyroscopic action that stabilized the rocket. In terms of money, this solution was almost free of cost, and the effect was better than with any super expensive gyroscope. Also, the engineers were amazed by a solid-fueled rocket that was insanely elongated. The Soviet scientists considered such construction to be impossible. But the most ingenious thing was that the missile's homing head was really very, very simple, but incredibly effective, especially compared to the complicated semi-active homing head of the Soviet K-5 missile. And when they tried to open it up, they found out that the Americans had drowned all the electronics in sealant to prevent the fragile vacuum tubes from breaking under overloads. The Soviet military had to organize special flights and drag to Moscow the best jewelers of Odessa and the best bone carvers of Yakutia, who, by the way, never saw a missile except for newspaper pictures and were scared to death. 
They were obliged to sign huge piles of secret documents and then ordered to, carefully, layer by layer, clean the precious circuit cards of the missile of the potential enemy. In a mere year, the new Soviet rocket, basically a copy of the Sidewinder, went into service as the K-13 in the USSR and the PL-2 in China. The communist countries closed gaps on the capitalists to a minimum. At first, the US military even wanted to charge amends from the USSR for illegal copying of their military tech. But they were talked out of it by the head of the Raytheon company, who claimed that the situation turned out to be the best imaginable advertisement of his product. When even your enemies so publicly and openly acknowledge your superiority, that should be worth something, right? To be just, by the end of the 70s, the K-13 was considered outdated in the USSR, and it was succeeded by the R-60, and then the magnificent R-73. This was the one that the Americans themselves were seriously considered taking into service into the 90s. But Raytheon leaders talked them out of this again, with a completely new line of defense. For some reason, they didn't want the current Sidewinder modification to become the last one. 